Okay, we are on page in the Gemara Ksubis, Ayin Vav Amid Beis, the last line on the page. What page is that? 76B3, all the way at the end of the page. 76. Ayin Vav Amid Beis, second page. Okay. Last line. Huh? Last line. Last line. Okay. Okay. So this I involve him in base. The, the Gemara is now going back to the Mishnah. It's much easier than last time. The Mishnah says, you know, about the, the fight, the the blemishes were before the Gedush and after the Gedush and who, who gets mixed up from it. But then the Chum say like this. When does this whole apply of the blemishes is with their concealed blemishes? Then you, I involve... 76 last line. B3, last line. Last line. Um, that's only if there's um, hid, yeah, only hidden blemishes. Then he could say, no, I didn't know, I did know, whatever. But if they're open blemishes, the Mishnah said, then he can't say, I didn't know about them. You looked at the girl, you saw them. I mean, they're open, they're not in hidden parts of the body or whatever it is. Okay, it says like this. Amr of Nachman of Nachman said, "Benichba, if somebody has epilepsy, is considered a moment shebeseiser. Epilepsy is considered a hidden blemish. Why? And the Gemara says like this. Most the Gemara is going to defend you, but most epilepsies, the people knew when they were going to get it. Epilepsy is like it says, uh, see, they get seizures, right? Uh, people know what epilepsy is." So he says like this, because according to the way the Gemara thinks now, a person knows when they're going to get epilepsy. So then, the a seizure. Yeah. So gotcha. then the woman gotcha. won't go in public to be seen. She'll know to stay home. So nobody knows she has seizures. So therefore it's considered a hidden blemish that you can't say he knew about it and accepted it because he didn't necessarily know about it because uh, <laughs> she did it. But the Gemara says, "Hani Mili, that's only the Kfilah's ma when the seizures are at a fixed time. And therefore, the woman is able to hide it. Avolei Kfilah, but if it's not a fixed time, meaning she can get seizures at any moment, and she does, the woman Shebegali Dami is considered like open blemishes. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, hidden blemishes, you have the whole discussion before in the Gemara. Open blemishes, the husband, if he can't come along and say that she has a crooked nose, he can't say, hey, I didn't like the crooked nose. You saw, he, he, she has a crooked nose. But epilepsy, the Gemara says, is considered a hidden blemish unless if she has no set time for seizures, then it's an open blemish. Okay. Until now, next Mishnah. Okay. And I and Zion and Elf. Now the Gemara is going to discuss how about male blemishes? <laughs> Until now, the Mishnah was all talking about the female, the woman's blemishes. Now starts about the men, the male blemishes. So the Mishnah said like this: A uh, a, woman, a man who got blemishes after the wedding, meaning he wasn't born with it. It became developed after he got married. Married. And Kaifin Aisilahitsi, we can't force him to divorce his wife. Meaning, a man's appearance is not as important as a, a woman's appearance. That means the man cares more about the woman's appearance than the woman cares about the man's appearance. So therefore, he can't say you have to divorce the wife. Okay? So even though the woman if the man finds blemishes in the woman, he could divorce her later. But the woman can't do the same thing to the man. But Amr Abishim and Gamliel, Abishim and Gamliel says, no, not true. But Med, when is this din stated? With little blemishes. The is going to say exactly what little ones are, what big ones are. But Mumin, Agadelim, but if they're real big blemishes, major defects, Kaif and Aisilah, we force him to divorce her, meaning if she wants to be divorced. I mean, if they want to live together, it's not a problem. Halachically, it's no problem that they can live together. But he says, like this, if it's small, the first opinion, the Chachamim say, any blemishes, big, small, 
okay, if they were even after they got married, I mean, they came after they got married, she can't come along and say, now, oh, I don't like the guy, I want to divorce him. She, she has to stay married. Obviously, <coughs> she wants to get a get, she can get a get, but then she doesn't get the ksuba. Okay? Now, Shem and Gabriel says there's a difference between big blemishes and little blemishes. It could be like a rash or something. No, the Gemara is going to talk about all these uh, interesting things. Okay, now in our Mishnah, our Mishnah's version said, no, the big woman, meaning they developed afterwards. No, the means they were born later. Okay? But the Gemara, there's two versions of what the Mishnah really said. Now, if you heard that, if you just says like this, he says in the Mishnah it said Noldu, developed. Chia <laughs> Barav Chia the son of Rav said, no. Hoyu, <laughs> the blemishes were there from before the wedding. Okay, now, meaning like this, according to Rav Yehuda's opinion, what does the Mishnah say? That there were no blemishes before, the woman accepted him. Now, if they be, got blemishes, she still can't demand a, a divorce for that. Uh, Rav, Rav, Chia by Rav says, no. It means even if they were before they got married. Okay, so the Gemara says like this. Man no, the, the, the opinion, the first opinion of you, the, what it says actually in our Mishnah, that the defects developed, and then you can't divorce her. Kol shikain hoyu. Certainly, if they were before the wedding and she saw them, then for sure she can't divorce him. If, even if they came later, he can't divorce. So if she knew about him before, for sure she can't wake up later and say, oh, I don't like him anymore. The Kasava Vikibla, because she saw them, she knew it, and she accepted it to marry him like that. But man, the Yomar, but the opinion, it says, how you? That it was, that's when she cannot get a divorce. But no, do. But if they became later, then lay meaning she could ask for a divorce. Okay. So the way the Gemara is learning again is not the way the version is in our Mishnah because our Mishnah says clearly they developed later. Right. So now the Gemara says like this. Rav Yudha says it doesn't matter if they even even if they develop later, she has no right to, to divorce him now. Definitely, if they were there from the beginning, so obviously she saw them. As long as they were visual. Yeah, obviously. Now, Chiyah Barav says, no. When can she not ask for a divorce if they always were there? What happens after they were married for years, he started developing these blemishes. So according to Chiyah Barav, you could, uh, she could force him to divorce him and give him a ksuba. So the Gemara says not like this. Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, it says like this. Amr of Shim and Gamliel. In our Mishnah, it says, Amr of Shim and Gamliel, of Shim and Gamliel said like this. Bamed varamamorim, when is this then stated that she cannot divorce him? But momiktanim, little minor defects. But momim gudailim, if they're big defects, kaifinai say lahitsi, you force him to divorce her. Right? Now, the Gemara says like this. If you say the opinion is Noldo, that they came later, then it makes sense to say the difference between big blemishes and little blemishes. Meaning, when they got married, there was no blemishes, according to that opinion, right? They came later. So then it makes sense to say a little blemish later, she can't divorce him. If it's a big blemish later, she could divorce him. But he says, But if they were always there from before the wedding, what's the difference between big or little, big, major or minor defects, Hasavah Vekibla? She accepted them. So why is that an issue? If the blemishes always were, and before they got married, so of course she knew the blemishes that the husband had. So why would she be in time, why would there be a difference between minor defects and big defects? It's no difference. She accepted it. She accepted it. So why it says like this? This is interesting. She thought, before she married him, she knew about the blemishes, by the way. But she thought, I can handle it. Then, then she can't. 
In other words, like, and that's what Rabbi Shem Gamliel says is din. It says like this. If it's minor blemishes, she can't come along and say, I, I, I can't handle it. Because they're minor, it doesn't matter. You can't force the husband to divorce the wife. But if it's major defects that came later, then she's able to say, listen, initially I thought I could live with these defects, and now I see that I can't. Or even if she was born with them. If there were little ones, fine. If there are big ones, she could say, listen, I can't live with them anymore. I can't handle the defects. Good morning. Okay. Now the Gemara is going to say what's called a big defect and what's a little defect. Okay? He knows it by heart. Okay. What are moment, what are big blemishes? Yeah, it says like this. Pirish of Shim Gamliel, Shim Gamliel, like Nisma's Ena, his eye became blinded. Nick the Yoda, his hand became cut off. Or Nish Bidalagli, his foot was shattered in a way that you can't even just put a cast on it and work. Okay? So Rab Shim Gamliel says those are called major defects. Those are called major defects. That the woman could say, I thought I was able to handle it, and now I can't. I realize I can't. She married this guy when she had these defects. Yeah, she married the guy when he had the defects. Right? According to, according to one opinion, Chiyabarav. According to the Yehuda, no, they came later. Came later. Okay? Okay. So also, if you get sick? Yeah, but the Gemara is saying that sick is, is a normal thing to happen. Okay. Depends how, how young the guy is when he gets sick. <laughs> hmm? But by the way, the, the we showed him right, that's only if one eye was blinded or one hand was cut off. But if both eyes blinded and both hands were, God forbid, cut off, then everybody says she can ask for a divorce because she can't uh, function like that. Okay, so now there's an argument in the Mishnah between Rabbi Shimon Gamliel and the Chachamim. Yeah? The Chachamim hold, if the man has a blemish, yeah? He can't, the wife can't force him to get divorce her. It stays what it is. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says, if it's big blemishes, yes, little blemishes, no. Correct? So now who's that loch like? <coughs> is it like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel or is it like the Chachamim? It might have Rav Abba by Yaakov Omer Rabbi Yechenen. Rav Abba by Yaakov said the name of Rabbi Yechenen. Allah is like Shim Gamliel. The Allah is like Shim Gamliel. That there's a difference between big blemishes, meaning if the husband developed or had from birth big, big blemishes, she has the right to divorce him. If the little blemishes, no, she can't. But Rav Amar no, Amar Rav Nachman. Rav said the name of Rav Nachman. Halacha k'div rechacham. No, halacha zik the chacham. That even big blemishes she can't divorce him. Well, she married the guy, right? Right. Like with these things. Well, no. There's two opinions in Gemara. Did it happen before? Did they happen well, afterwards? She should. Well, if they have before. Then she shouldn't have married the guy. But she married him. Yeah. That means she accepted it. That's right. Okay. But now let's say the situation got worse. Or according to one opinion, the other opinion says, she thought she can handle it. Now she sees she can't. She thought she can handle a person who's blind in one eye. Now she sees she can't. Okay, so Rav Yechelen says the Allah is like Rav Shem Gamliel, and, the, and the, Rav, is, Rav Nachman says the Allah is like the Chacham. So Gemara says, How can you say that? Any time the name Rab Shim Gamliel is mentioned, Rabbi Yechinen, same Rabbi Yechinen says, any time Rab Shim Gamliel's name is mentioned in the Mishnah, throughout the entire Mishnah, the Allah is like him, except three cases, which is none of these cases. Okay? So now the Gemara's question is, why does Rabbi Yechen have to say that Allah is a Rabbi Shem Gamliel, which he says in our Gemara, that Allah is a Rabbi Shem Gamliel, that Allah is always a Rabbi Shem Gamliel, according to Rabbi Yechen. 
So why, in other words, the fact that he says over here that Allah is a Kreb Shem Gamliel shows other places not. Right? But he says in another place that Allah is always a Kreb Shem Gamliel. So why does he have to say that here that Allah is a Kreb Shem Gamliel? So the Gemara says, he right, Two opinions are arguing with Rabbi Yechonin said. Meaning, one opinion says, Rabbi Baba Chana says, any time Rabbi Shim Gamliel is mentioned in the Mishnah, except those three places, the Allah is like him. The opinion that says, Rabbi Yaakov, who says, that here the Allah is like Rabbi Shim Gamliel, Holds that Allah is not always a Kreb Shem Gamliel. In this case, Rabbi Yechanan says that Allah is a Kreb Shem Gamliel. <coughs> so that's the argument to who is that Allah like. By the way, that Allah is like the Chachamim. That uh, under any circumstance, whether the big or small, the woman cannot uh, divorce him unless if it's such a super thing that she can say, I can't, uh, you know. That's what the Rishenim learn. Rishayim says the guy, if the guy's blind in both eyes, even the Chachamim would agree <coughs> that she can divorce him. Okay, I can't, you know, I can't live like this. But one I know? No. Not according to the Chachamim. According to Rav Shem Gamil, he, she could divorce him. The uh, well, the way the Rishayim <coughs> passed in the Allah is like Rav the Chachamim. Taisus over here. <laughs> Taisus, he thought like a Jew. If that's the case, so a criminal woman, yeah, will marry a guy with one eye, okay, and then she'll come along a week later and say, okay, I want to divorce him, I want to get the ksuba. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, According to Reb Shem Gamliel, you can force the husband to divorce her, and he has to pay the ksuba, right? Even though she knows she knew he was blind. Or one yeah, eye? she knew. Uh, in other words, it's a business. business. Yeah, she, the girl says, "Okay, let me make a few hundred bucks over here." She married this guy who's blind in one eye. Yeah, according to Reb Shem Gamliel, I get Allah is not like that, but according to Reb Shem Gamliel, she come marry the guy. The guy will want to marry because who wants to marry this guy? So any girl that's wanting to go on and marry him will be willing to marry, right? And then she comes along a week later and says, no, I can't handle it. So you forced her husband to divorce her and give her ksuba, right? So she'll make a few hundred bucks. So Taisus answered an interesting thing. If Besden feels that's why she did it, they wouldn't give her ksuba. If Besden can figure out Assumption of uh, why it's happening. So Taisus says, "Take." He says, "Shama b'makom sheish shasharama." Maybe when Bezin feels there's a trickery going on over here, uh, she won't get the ksuba. And Taisus says another thing, even though we find in different Gemaras that if a man divorces a woman against his will, he doesn't have to pay the ksuba, here is different. Because he, he developed the blemishes or had them the whole time, so then he, he would have to get paid the ksuba anyway. Okay. Now, the, the next mission is going to continue discussing what are male blemishes. Got to listen to some of them, I keep these are the ones that we force him, okay, to divorce. Okay. And taste it, uh, by the way, the commentators explain that I, we just said, Allah is like the Chacham, that he cannot divorce her. But we said before, if it's like blind in both eyes or whatever, it's so bad, she said, I can't handle it. Even the Chacham would agree that he can divorce her. What are they? Mukeshkin, a guy who's full of boils. Okay, we're going to see later exactly what that means. Yeah. Obal uh, Pulipus, and the Gemara is going to discuss what that is. Okay. 
Uh, I'm a comet. The comments will see two opinions in the Gemara, but Makamas generally, the simple meaning of it is in Beverly Hills, there's, there's a rule that if your dog uh, poops in the street, you have to clean it up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, in the time of the Gemara, in the time of the, in the, time of the Gemara, the commission also, they didn't have that rule. <laughs> so they had a guy that was paid to go clean up the animal poops. Don't forget, people had an ox, a donkey, a horse. I mean, there were a lot of animals in the street, right? And they would all do their thing. So there was a guy called the McComets who went around picking up all the poo, pardon the expression, <coughs> all over the place. And the guy stunk, obviously. Yeah. So that's called a blemish. Oh. Or a Mitzarev <laughs> Necheshes, a guy that uh, refiner of copper, huh? No, I use I use get I'm inside of the a refiner of copper. Again, it has a, the person smells. A borsi and a tanner, a guy that tans hides. Because these are terrible smelling things. Chemicals. Okay, so he says like this. In these cases, Bain Shahoyu actually this this is what the mission is going whether they were there before. Or Bain Misha needs to know that whether the defects came afterwards, he began he got these professions. Al Kulon Amar Rabbi Rabbi Meir and all of them, Rabbi Meir said, "Afal pi shehisne ima." Even though when she got married to him, she made a condition with him. I know you're a tanner. I know you're a mechamitz. I know you're all these jobs. I'm going to marry you anyway. Yecheli he shatemi. She can come along later and say, "Sevuda ayisi shani yecheli lekabel." I thought I can handle the smell. Va'achshav eni yochel lekabel. But now I can't. Can the, doesn't this guy take a bath? Chachamim Amim, one second. Chachamim argue. And they say that if he told her before the wedding, this is what I do for a living, and she accepted it, Mekabalasi al Korcha, she or all of them except one. She has if that's the condition they made, she has to accept it. She can't come along and say, I thought I can handle your smell, now I can't. Except a guy that's full of boils. What's the problem? Because when she has intimacy with him, she causes his flesh to fall apart. Oh God! So that's really gross. Okay. <laughs> so then, so that that's a problem. But the other things. So the mayor says. The mayor says all these smelling type of jobs, whatever. So Ramey says, listen, she was able to say, yes, I, I stipulated I'm going to marry you. Yes, I knew about it before we get married, but I thought I can handle it, and now I see I can't. Chachamim oh, say no. If she stipulated with him beforehand, she's marrying him, and she knew this, accept the Boyle story, she has to accept it. She can't ask for it again. I mean, she can ask for it again, but she won't get a ksuba. Do you want to know something? She doesn't necessarily know what the smell of a tanner smells like. Maybe why. So when she's married, she's going in blind, thinking that... That's why the mayor holds what he holds, by the way. But the Chachamim say, listen, you make a stipulation, I'm marrying you regardless. You can't come along and say later, I didn't know what that meant. That's what the Chachamim You can't come along later, wake up, oh... You know, I thought it was a perfume smell. I mean, come on. She should know. Or she won't. Let her Google it. You know, Google smell. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> let, her take, uh, let her take a whiff of it and find out what it is. But if he was in the profession before when they got engaged, she would have smelled him anyway. That's true. No, they didn't see each other. I think they saw each other. Yeah, huh? Yeah, long distance relationship. Yeah. <laughs> And can you take a bath when he comes home? It didn't help. didn't help. <laughs> no, the smell would still be there. It looks like he didn't live in the last century. And the, so, the, the mission continues. A very interesting story by the way, which says the Rambam brings down La Locha. There was a story in the city of Tzidin. The Borsi Achat Shemes, a tanner died. The guy was a tanner, died without kids. Okay? So his wife had to do Yibam with the guy's brother. Now, the brother was a tanner also. But the wife can say, I don't want to do yibum. 
because I, it's the same smell. She <laughs> said, your brother's smell I can handle, yours I can't. And he had a brother who was also a tanner. And she said, that's said, she's able to say, listen, your brother's smell I could tolerate, and yours I can't tolerate. <laughs> Meaning, what does it mean? It's the same smell. So, the Mephoshim explained, very simple. Your brother had other outstanding qualities, and I was able to overlook this. You don't have those qualities, so she can't say this smell, because it's the same smell. So she stopped the hook? Yeah, well, she has to do chalitza. Usually the chalitza is up to the man. Yeah, but here, that's what we're saying. Over here, she could demand chalitza. And he brings out the bottom, that's interesting. The Rashi in Yavama says that a woman by Yibum has more excuses not to marry the guy than a regular marriage. Because she has more, uh, yeah, more leverage. Okay, so so Gemara says like this: My bow polypus. Remember, we learned in the Mishnah one of the blemishes that the wife can check out is a polypus. So Gemara says, "My bow polypus." So there's two opinions. Amir of Yudah Meshmul Recha Chaitim. It means a terrible odor from the nose. Masnit to turn a bright, it says, Recha Peh. Terrible of breath. Okay? Now, the Gemara, the, the Rishayim, right, by the way, even though they're arguing what the word polypus is, but halachically, either one of them is a problem. Bad nose smell or bad breath it would be the same problem. He says, Rav Asi Masni Okay, see, the way the Gemara says now, Shmuel says, it means, Bad nose smell. And the Bryce says bad breath. So he says no, it was the other way around. Uh when he even gives a sign that Shmuel Pasik Pumin Mikula Pirkin. That Shmuel did not stop learning and analyzing the entire chapter, which means that Shmuel held, according to this version, that it's the smell of the mouth, and the Bryce says it's the smell of the nose. Basically it's things that are extremely uncomfortable. Now, you know. Bottom line is if you could take, like he said, why don't you take a bath? Okay, obviously, speaking, it doesn't help. If it was helped, don't take a bath and finish. Right? Even though, even though the Gemara says in a different place, which also says that in those days, people took baths once a week only. Mm-hmm. So that means for, yeah, it would be good for one day. But all the other times, uh, six, the six other days a week, uh, would be a problem. Why they might take bath once a month, once a week? Uh, it wasn't only a time of the Gemara. Not very long ago. They didn't have showers in homes. Hundred years ago, people took baths and showers once a week. Fifty years ago, a lot of people. Hundred years ago, now. I'm saying yeah, whatever. <laughs> People that live in, in the third world countries yeah. don't take showers every day. Where do you get a shower from? Where the water is free. Hmm. Mucho dinero. Okay, then the Gemara says like this. The mystic said another case is Mekamets. So what's Mekamets? So he said, my Mekamets. I'm going to view this on Mekamets. Tzayas Klovim. The one who collects dog manure from the street. Okay? Meaning, meaning wherever he finds it, he has to gather it with his hands. He used to do it. Okay? Um, Some gloves. Gloves. Yeah. No, but you know, Rashi here says, he quotes a Rashi here. No One second. Yeah, Rashi says, what in the world? Rashi, why in the world? Rashi says, <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea 
Why the guy is gathering dog poop, poop in, in, in his hands? But then Rashi says, Avalbaashkenaz in Germany. Rashi says, Raisi, I saw. Rashi traveled the, the the civilized world at that time. Rashi went to Mitzrayim. He met the Rambam there, according to many opinions. Rashi traveled. So he said in Germany he saw Shesherim Bam Habgodim. My God, they used to soak clothing in this dog pool. Yerma Yemayim, a day or two before they washed the garment. Huh? Say what? He says they used to soak the garment a day or two before it was washed in this dog pool. Dog pool. Soften Why? To soften it, acid maybe. Um, Ammonia. So he, at the bottom he talks about, he says like this The Gemara and Bracha syndicates dog manure was used for tanning leather. Because it, it acid. Rashi does not mention this here because in the context of the Gemara will be apparent. The review does not consider this purpose collection. Rashi goes on to explain the laundering process involves the use of dog manure based on the premise here. In Baba Basra, Rashi also says that, you know, it's interesting. You know how the Israeli soldiers wash their hands? With earth. When the hands are very dirty, greasy, they take earth with water. Uh, and the earth, believe it or not, cleans the hands. The acid cleans, uh, takes off the grease. No, it's interesting. So Rashi says the dog manure was done in the cleaning process of garments. They used to soak them, then they washed them. Also brings on to soak in urine. They didn't have gloves in those days. You know, the disposable gloves. No, they didn't have. No. They didn't have. Also not. <laughs> not with powder. No or showers. No, no. No showers, no disposable gloves. And none of the bags for the dogs that they have, you know, you stick care. What about that dog part? Okay, but the Gemara says like this, Meisve, so now the Gemara says, Mekamet is the guy that collects the poor, right? But the Gemara says, Meisve, Mekamet, in the Bryce it says, it's a board, it's a tanner. It's not what you said, a guy that collects the dog stuff, it's actually a tanner. So the Gemara asks, no, the Gemara asks back. Our Mishnah says, Mekamet, Mitzarev, Nechayshis, Vaborsi. Our Mishnah says, Mekamet and Borsi. If you're telling me Mekamet means a Borsi, why does our Mishnah mean a Mekamet and a Borsi? It's the same thing. So the Gemara says like this, no. Our Mishnah is not a question because there's two types of tanners, big hides, and little hides. Okay? Borsi gado. Gamba borsi gado. Gamba borsi cotton. Our Mishnah is... T- okay. Tanner is referring to a large-scale tanner. And the other one's a, a small-scale tanner. Meaning uh, how busy your business is. Uh, the, Yod, the, Kasha, the question is... It's a question. How could Rabbi Yod say? Mikamitz means... He collects the dog pool when the Mr. Bryce clearly says it's a, it's a tanner. So Gemara says, okay, it's really <coughs> the same thing. It's a machlekes tanoim. In other words, there's an argument, what does mekametz mean? By the way, the Rambam, in, in Hilchas Chagiga, the Rambam writes that uh, mekametz, right, the Rambam says, is the guy that gathers the dog pool. He doesn't say it's a tanner. He also got that opinion, like review that it, it says it's a guy that collects. Okay, so one opinion says mekam is a borsi, and the yeshayimim, and the other opinion says it's a mekam is a So he says there's two opinions and a brayse of what it means, but it doesn't matter because bottom line, the Mishnah mentions both of them, that those are defects that the wife can say I can't handle it. So then it says like this: a metzarev nechayshes. The next part of the Mishnah said a guy that. Um, a refiner of copper. So Gemara says, "My mitzad of nechayshin." What does it mean? A copper guy. What does it mean? Ravashi Omar. Ravashi says like this: "Chashli dude, a coppersmith who pounds out kettles." Okay, meaning he ba- he knocks out the copper to make it good for pots. He used to make copper pots in those days, right? Yeah. The copper piping. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He used to bang, pounds out copper into sheets, okay? 
and it's very repulsive. Um, Rabbi Barachana says, It's not a guy that makes copper into sheets. It's a guy that mines the copper from the ground. So it says, Tanya Kavase, the Rabbi Barachana, okay, uh, we learned to Bryce so like Rabbi Barachana, Rabbi Barachana is, what does it say? A is a mitzarif, what is considered, what is a mitzarif? So it's not like Ravashi says, a guy that, you know, bangs out copper to make pots. It means, um, one who mines copper from the source. Bottom line of all these cases, the is going into something else now. All these cases, bottom line is, they're repulsive jobs. They cause a foul odor, and the wife could say, I don't want them. And she can get a divorce if she wants. She can get divorced, and she gets the ksuba. Okay. Now, Ralph says like this. This can happen nowadays, by the way. Ahmed Av Rav said, with the is going now into other cases where a guy can be forced to divorce his wife. Okay? It's the first time I to discuss about the smelling stuff. The Ahmed Av, If a guy says, I'm not planning to feed my wife and I'm not going to provide for her. Like Gemara said before, I'm not giving her clothing, I'm not giving her bedding, I'm not giving her food. I married her, I'm not interested in giving anything. And the wife says, uh, excuse me, you know, I want out. So, Amar, uh, Amar Av, to be eating suba. You force the husband, if the wife doesn't want to stay married, right? You force the husband to give her a get, and she gets the suba. Because he's wrong. Azor, Abel Azor, so Abel Azor went. Ba'amel Shmaitze Kamir Shmu. He said this din of Rav in the presence of Shmuel. Okay? Ahmed, he says, Achsuya sare lalazar. Give barley for food to Rabbi Lazar. <laughs> in other words, like this. Rav said, Rabbi Lazar quoted the din of Rav to Shmuel. What did Rav say? A guy says, I'm not supporting my wife, I'm not feeding nothing, he has to give her a get. So Shmuel said, when Rabbi Lazar repeated this to Shmuel, Shmuel said, you should be fed barley, you're like an animal. <laughs> what type of stupid statement is that you're repeating to me? Why don't you think about the statement you're repeating to me in the name of Rav, you, you're like an animal, I'm going to feed you animal food. It was very sharp people in those days. He says, <laughs> Shmuel says to him, Rav's din is, is doesn't make sense. What did Rav say? The guy refuses to, to support the wife, yeah? You force the husband to give a get. Correct? No. Shmuel says, why doesn't Bezin force him to feed her? <laughs> Rav says, a guy refuses to support his wife, Bezin forces him to divorce her. Yeah? So Shmuel says, what type of din is that? Bezin forces him to feed her. Why should he just divorce her? Yeah. Huh? Well, maybe because... One minute. So the, now the question is, so why did Ralph say what he said? Ralph said you forced him to divorce. Why didn't Ralph say that uh, you forced him to feed? He says a very interesting thing. Ein adam dar in fifa. You cannot force a person to live with a snake in the same basket. A husband who could say, I don't want to feed you. I don't want to support you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Despises her. Yeah, you can't force a woman. So what does Raf say? You're going to force him to feed her? She still doesn't want to stay married to such a guy. So therefore, Rav holds Taki, you force him to give a ksuba. And you make him divorce. And Shmuel held no. Okay. Kisalik Rabzeda. Rabzeda went up. You mean, like we know, Rabzeda first lived in Bavl. And then he went up to Eretz right? And he fasted 100 fast, 40 fast, whatever. So Ashkechel le Rabbi Yomim by Yafes. Rabbi Zayir found Rabbi Binyamin by Yafes. The Yosef Kamele Mishmei de Rabbi Yechinen. He said Rav's din in the name of Rabbi Yechinen. Okay? Meaning, 
Rav said the din in Bavel, that you force the husband to divorce her. Rabbi Yechelen said the same din in Eretz Yisrael. Because of this din, they forced, <coughs> they forced him to eat barley. In other words, Abzaira said to him, you know, that this din, Shmuel disagreed with. Shmuel disagreed with. Okay? Now, the Rishonim right, but an interesting din. Even according to, so what's it, according to Shmuel, what do you do? Ralph says you divorce him. Her, right? You force him to divorce the wife. Shmuel says, no, you force, force him, him to feed, feed him. him. What happens if he has no money to feed her? So Bezin can't force him. He can't milk a dry cow. So the Rashba writes, in that case, Bezin would, even Shmuel would agree you force him to divorce. But well, you, you, Bezin going to force him to feed? He can't. So what are you going to do? So if the wife wants, she, even according to Shmuel, she didn't get a get. And the kasuba. Huh? And the kasuba? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, where is he going to get the kasuba from? I have to borrow it. Take out the savings. I don't know. Sell for 401k. Huh? Sell stock. Sell stock, whatever. Okay. Amen of Yudam and Avasi. So, so far in the Gemara, we have like this. The guy has terrible smalls. Bezin can force him to give a get. He refuses to feed her. Bezin can give a get. Now the Gemara is going to say another case. These are all cases, by the way, when Bezin forces the husband to give a get to the wife. So now the Gemara is going to say like this. If they're not allowed to marry each other, the forbidden marriage, then Bezin will also force him to give a get. That means a marriage, and I'm going to explain like this, a marriage which is halachically valid but forbidden. A coin which is only not, not capital punishment. But the marshal, guy's married to his sister, it's not a marriage, you don't need to get, it was never a kedushin to begin with. A guy's married to a married woman, you know, to another married to somebody else. So then you don't need to get. It's not a valid condition, right? But the Gemara says like this. We, can, we don't force a man to give a get unless if they're married halachically incorrect. And the Gemara is going to say like this. When I said this then to Shmuel, he said like this. Omar, what are the cases? A widow to a kind gadol. Right? It's a legitimate marriage. Because <coughs> it's only a negative commandment, it's not capital punishment. So therefore the Kedusha would be valid. So therefore you'd force him to give a get. <coughs> or a divorcee, or a woman that had chalitza for a regular kain. Mamzeres unasin al Yisrael, a mamzer, or another type of forbidden thing to Yisrael. Bas Yisrael, or a Jewish woman that's married to a nasin or mamzer. <coughs> Huh? What's Nasina? Nasina. It's, um, I learned that before in the Gemara. The Nasina, it's, it's a forbidden mess, a nation that was not allowed to be con- converted. So therefore, there was a Mamish uh, forbidden. But it was a valid condition, similar to Mamzer. Now, but, this is interesting. Nasa if a man married a wife, and they don't have kids for 10 years, you can't force him to divorce her. Can't? Cannot. Okay? Now, the question is like this. Why would... Why would you force him to divorce? Because a man has a mitzvah provo, right? If she can't have kids, he's not going to be able to fulfill provo. So what the Gemara is saying is like this: We can't force him to divorce the wife, 
but Bezdin can force him to marry a second wife when second wives are permitted. Yeah, in Talmudic times it was permitted. Not only the last thousand years you can't marry two wives. That's only if you're Ashkenazic too. Now it's far the most of can, but there was a time Sephardim had many wives. Go to Yemen, I guess. Two, three wives. For the price of one. Okay, so he says, Anchor, you can't force him. Because the woman didn't do anything. It's not a forbidden relationship. I, the man, has a mitzvah to do pure rules, so let him go marry a different woman. And he says like this. But he, it, there's a different view. Rafta Khlifa Baravdima Mashmol. Okay? See, so this is one opinion according to Shmuel. But Rav Tachliva Baravdim is said in the name of Shmuel something else. A filu nasa isha, if a guy married a wife, the shah es is shanim, and they were married for 10 years without kids, kaif and I see you do force him to divorce her. So there's an argument what Shmuel said. One opinion says Shmuel says if they're married 10 years without kids, you cannot force them to divorce. And the second opinion says Shmuel said, no, you could force them to divorce. And we'll see to be continued. Leave it in.